right here in the sacrifice area, I'm getting a lot of weeds. And the reason these weeds are coming up is because of the compaction. Um, the horses create compaction. The compaction creates um, a layer. People think compaction is a density problem. Compaction is not a density problem. It is, but it's actually an oxygen problem. Because water moves down through the looser soil and very close under the surface is a compacted layer and the water will move across and that creates a slime layer where anaerobic bacteria and fungi and pathogens live. And those anaerobic microbes create uh, byproducts of their metabolism of substances with a pH of 2, acids, like spoiled milk, like vinegars. Those, those are the byproducts of anaerobic fermentation, alcohols. Now plant roots cannot live, terrestrial plants cannot live in alcohol environments. Swamp plants can deal with alcohols, but most terrestrial land plants that you're familiar with cannot deal with alcohol. In fact, if their root goes into the alcohol, it will be dissolved and they will die. So it's a biochemical kind of thing happening in, in addition to the physical compaction. There's all three components. So just tilling it up will not solve the problem because it's fluffing it, but underneath that blade is just the deeper compaction layer. And as soon as it rains, the, the tillage actually kills the microbes that create the soil structure and create it from and keep air space in the soil and hold things so that air can move through the soil and water. And so when it rains after the tillage event, the soil just flattens back out again. Or if the horses come back on it, the tilling and reseeding compacted areas doesn't really work. The soil in this part of the county is red clay. <laughs> so I'm turning what would be red clay into nice brown structured humus. You probably heard of humus. Um, this is a humus layer. But what happens with clay, if you have clay in your soil, is clay are these little tiny particles of soil that lie in stacks. Well, they can lie in stacks. They're like plates. And, or they can lie at right angles to each other and you can have airspace in your soil, which is critical for water infiltration, infiltration and growth. And those of you who are into soil chemistry will know that the calcium-magnesium ratio of your soil determines whether the clay is what's called flocculated. So when you flocculate the clay, you change the energetic magnetic structure of the particles because you change the electron structure and they turn at right angles like magnets that repel each other. And so you get soil structure from the changing of calcium magnesium ratios, but if, you're, if you really understand the biology, the biggest source of soil calcium is your fungi because all the channels of the fungal hypha, their tunnels, the fungi is made of all these little tunnels and it sends its active cell cytoplasm through those hollow tunnels and it, at the tips of the fungi it digests sand, silt, and clay and these plant residues. The fungi are digesting this surface residue and those tunnels are made of calcium carbonate. So your non-leachable source of soil calcium is not lime, folks, it's fungi. And so basically by feeding the fungi, I can change my red Virginia compacted clay that's waterlogged, heavy, sticky clay, and I can increase its water infiltration capacity, its nutrient um, cycling capacity, and these fungi are amazing. So the biology and the chemistry are linked to the physical properties. You can talk about soil from any one of those lenses. You can talk about it from the physical structure. You can talk about it from the biological structure. You can talk about it by its chemical properties. But soil is a living organism versus dirt, which is sterile.